Welcome back, me shipmates. UK Video Game Pirate back with part 15 in my recent pickups. Apart from they're not too recent, they were filmed all the way back in July. So get ready for 16 NES games. Let it roll. Okay, on with the first NES pickup, and this is definitely a case of save the best till last, because I've played numerous versions of games from this particular series from the 90s. And the first one was on the Amiga, second one was on the Mega Drive, and the last one is on the NES, and that is Captain Planet. And it basically, <laughs> I, I can't believe that when I was a kid, I was so desperate that a game on the Amiga was being good. I can't remember if I got it at Christmas time or a birthday or something, and it was absolutely terrible. And then I bought the game on the Mega Drive, just out of curiosity, and that didn't turn out too well either. But this one, not too bad. Different sort of sort of a shooter game, you could say, I don't know what you class it as. But anyway, there's the first one, Captain Planet. Okay, up next, a game that I'd, I've never heard of before and it ha didn't have the most exciting name possible, but it looked interesting enough to, looking at the gameplay and that was Rescue the Embassy Mission. I heard that, is there something very frustrating about this game? Um, you can probably tell me, those that have actually played it, but this sort of entered the category. Yeah, this is the sort of game that could enter my collection. It looks good enough to give it a try. But anyway, Rescue the Embassy Mission. Right, the next game, there was versions of this pretty much on everything. All your 8-bit, all your handheld, all your 16-bit, but it was very much almost a different version depending on what platform you were playing on. A lot of people can probably guess that now, and that is Jurassic Park. I do like how, I actually think the NES box art is probably the best out of all the three Jurassic Parks that come out there. I don't know, I'd have to look at them, the ones I've got. But anyway, there's Jurassic Park. And the next game, another game very much in the vibe of the Beholder fame. Sorry, my mouth's getting dry. And that is Swords and Serpents. Obviously, these sort of games were obviously put more very much suitable for the old click of the mouse, point and click of the mouse. But it'd be actually interesting to see how something in this gut style of game would play on the NES. I do have my CRT out all the time. It's on wheels, so it's actually easy to move about. So if I do want to plug in something into it, it's not hard work the way I've got it. But anyway, Swords and Serpents. Okay, the next game didn't come over here up to the UK Power Territories. This is actually NTSC, and it is another Taito game. And it is what a lot of people love in the community, good old shmups. And that is Sky Shark. As you know, this game only came out in NTSC regions. I'm not sure why it didn't come out over here. If you look at the US library compared to what we actually got come out of here, it's huge. It's like three times, four times the size of what we got come out over here. But anyway, Sky Shark. And the next game, very much in the vein of Eye of the Beholder, and a lot of you can probably guess it, and that is Shadow Gate. When I see this game, it obviously very much reminds me of Eye of the Beholder. Obviously, don't see too many games like this anymore. But here's the next NES game, Shadow Gate. Okay, I've never been a basketball fan, but I loved NBA Jam back in the 16-bit periods. And this was the most well thought of game that came over it in that sort of category. And that is Double Dribble. I didn't mind, I actually... When it came to later basketball games, as they are now, I much preferred them how they were back then. They're much more simpler. Maybe I just don't know how to play basketball with games properly. That's true as well. But back then, it was very much more simple. Anyway, double dribble. And the next game is another Taito game, another side-scrolling action game, and that is Blue Shadow. And very much your Japanese art style on this game here. Looks very anime-like on the front, but obviously it's not an anime game, or maybe it's based on one, please tell me. 
Anyway, blue shadow. Now, I used to love sitting down and playing point and click games on the Amiga when I was a kid. Probably starting with Monkey Island, Monkey Island 2, Loom, Cruise for a Corpse, Indiana Jones, Fate of Atlantis, I think we had The Last Crusade as well. But this is pretty much the only one I believe on the NES that's out here in power territories anyway. And that is Maniac Mansion. Probably not the best way to play this game. Obviously, it is a great point and click game, but obviously when you're using a D-pad to play these kind of things, isn't the best way forward. Anyway, Maniac Mansion. And the next game is a sequel to a not very thought of game, and that is The Simpsons Bart vs. The World. And now this is a pure nostalgia pickup purely, but I actually think more of this one than I do Bart's vs. the Space Mutants. But I did own Bart's vs. the Space Mutants back in the day on the Amiga. And the best thing about that, as anyone knows, the intro, you think you're going to play a really good game. But when you get into it, you just realise it's not. But as I said, show you the back. As I said, not a very thought of game, Bart vs. the World. And the next one, please tell me if I'm wrong, but by the looks of it, I had a little go. Is this the prequel to Forgotten Worlds? And that is Burai Fighter. Of course, Forgotten Worlds on the Mega Drive. I had the sort of mispleasure of playing it on the Amiga back in the day, but back in the day I was tolerant to anything. I liked it. But it's Burai Fighter. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a tear there where the old tab used to be, but I'm accepting it, to tell you the truth, because the rest of it's in such great condition but as i said by the looks of it on the back of the box it looks like a prequel to uh forgotten worlds which i do have on the mega drive but anyway there's the next one burai fighter next one is another side scrolling action shooter and that is quantum fighter really weird company now kabuki is that what it says am i even saying it right but anyway there's quantum fighter like always, every game in a cardboard is all in these box protectors. I don't think I have one that isn't. No, I haven't. But anyway, there's the next one, Quantum Fighter. And the next game is something my friends are very low on, and that's low on G-Man. Uh, well, my friends anyway never got any money to do anything. But here is low G-Man. And as you say, another, my, most games in the Bay 2D side-scrolling. But not the most exciting cover in the world is this, is really. Could it be top or near the top up there with... There's one on the Super Nintendo as well, and they're a really bad cover. Can't remember what it's called. But anyway, low G, man. And next, a Taito or Taito game, however you like to say it. And that is Wrath of the Black Manta. Just get it in focus there. I see side-scrolling ninja game. So that's the next one, Wrath of the Black Manta. Okay, on, on to the next one, a pre-warned. This is pretty much a run-of-the-mill sort of middle market sort of games. There's nothing overly exciting too much in this video. That's definitely in the next video. And this is another one in games, Marble Madness, that came out on many platforms across the 8-bit era. Yet again, obviously, it is not a bad game by any stretch, but just to say, nothing too exciting, even though there is 16 NES. They are, as you'll see, pretty middle market sort of games. So anyway, that was the next one, Marble Madness. And lastly here, we probably have the best racing game on the NES, but that isn't so much, is it? It didn't really evolve to like the basically the 3D generation, but even though Outrun in the 16-bit era, but it sort of came out in the 8-bit era, but I don't know. Anyway, that is Prati Pro-Am. Has there ever been a sequel to this sort of Mario Kart would be the next evolution of this, I would have thought. And but RC Prime is the last NES game here to show you, and the next pickup video is where the big stuff's at. So be prepared for that one. I can't wait to film that. So enjoy the rest of the video. And here, starting my Xbox pickups, I started with a game that came out recently, and that is AEW Fight Forever. 
very much in the vein of WWF No Mercy and WrestleMania on the N64, and very much in the gameplay was a bit buggy, I felt, not game breaking or anything, but uh, I very much enjoyed it, but what did annoy me, on the when on your career mode, I was doing the Chris Jericho story, and I got to the very last match, and it crashed, it will not let me do the last match, so it really put a sour taste in my mouth when I was going for one of the achievements, but I will get round to it, and I'll probably have to start another character again, but anyway, I think it is actually a decent game, pretty light on content, I would say, Leads a lot more to it. It's not as polished as the WWE games are. And obviously, WWE with the uh, legends of rosters they've got to go by with AEW's more new. Doesn't have them legends there of the past. But anyway, AEW, Fight Forever, great game. Next game that came out recently, and that is Dead Island 2. Um, a game I played co-op with my friend. Very much enjoyed it. I didn't quite 100% all the achievements. I got like 840 gamer score or something like that. But I don't try and go for every achievement. So I used to be big time into them. Now I just take them where I get them. But Dead Island 2, I very much enjoyed it. Uh, I'd say much improved over the first first one. And the uh, we can't really call it the second one, but there was a second game. But anyway, Dead Island 2. Nextly... We have here some CEX pickups, I think they're all CEX pickups, original Xbox, and we have Midway Arcade Treasures. As you can see there, I paid £3.50 as Midway Arcade Treasures. Next game, we have Blood Omen 2, and as you can see there, I paid £5. I'm yet to remove the stickers, that will become very shortly. And next, another game from CEX, but I have taken the sticker on this one. And obviously this came out on multiple consoles, and this is Time Splitters 2. Obviously I'm using the original Xbox as it's the most powerful for my multi-plat games of this generation. So there's Time Splitters 2. And finally, a game I actually already own, and a game I very much adore as a... I can't really say nostalgia, I was like in my mid-20s when I was playing this game, and that is Fable 2. Uh, I've had the normal version of this game, I got it not long after it came out, and I do actually own all the DLC digitally, and I saw this, I can't remember, it was cheap, but I've taken the sticker off, and that's why I bought it, I thought uh, for that price I've got to upgrade. So, luck for those who don't like seeing any modern day pickups Xbox 360 sorry but that was very quick but that's all all for now on the Xbox front and now on to my only Nintendo Switch pickup as you can see it's the re redoing of House of the Dead we're basically just pulling it over to the Switch and giving you one gun two guns they have to make them look like toys these days don't they you make them all colorful and not real anyway so that is my don't really pick up many switch games a lot of people seem to probably something's going to come out in the future for me but as for now my only switch game the house of the dead and now on to some movie pickups a couple of here to show you and first we have scream six um not many horror films i'd say are really great these days love the 80 slashes they try and recreate it but it's never quite worked out. I did like the first Terrifier film, and I've yet to see the second one. Some people say it's terrible, but I really enjoyed the first one. We're here, Scream 6, and this is pretty much a return to form. I didn't really have to think at what's going on here, what's going on now. A lot I have in the past in most horror films where he seems to whack a load of scenes together that don't make, make it sense where I have to watch this film through about three times before I understand what's going on. But anyway, Scream 6, a return to form, but like with most films these days, it has to go a certain way, doesn't it? And it's no different with this film. They do it to everything, unfortunately. But anyway, Scream 6. And the next one. And this, Super Mario Brothers the movie. And after the disappointment when I was a kid of the 1993 movie, I remember going to see it at the cinema. Uh, Oh yeah, I was disappointed as a kid. I never thought it was great, but it's one of them films that I just watch because of nostalgia more than anything else. But this, um, I've watched this baby up three or four times, so I must enjoy it. But 
The thing that bugged me more than anything was sometimes where they could have used like Nintendo music, like especially when they were in the carts and going around in the map, the, the carts from Super Mario Kart and going to see Donkey Kong when they could have played some of the music out of Donkey Kong Country and something like that and instead of using real life music. So apart from that, yeah, decent movie, definitely an improvement on the 1993 movie and that is Super Mario Brothers the movie and as you can see I have got the 4k blu-ray version as I did think for this sort of film with the animation it has I thought it would be benefit from 4k big time anyway Super Mario Brothers the movie and that's the end of the movie pickups and here we have my latest addition to my Brett the Hitman heart figures and this came out recently and this is a re-release of a costume I think he wore at WrestleMania 9 and onwards but this is his all pink attire and this basically I was from amazon.co.uk and it's, I believe it's on sale now for like £28 so now's probably the best time to get it because these do go out of stock and then you see people selling them on eBay for double the price they paid for them after a few months yep and there's a lot of customers out there for it so get in there and now going on with a theme from the golden era wrestlers another one to add to that shrine and that is the junkyard dog and i do believe i think there's a new figure of him coming out soon i might be wrong might be imagining things because i know there is another figure in the uh, red tights but this is the most commonly well-known persona that he put across in his white tights there i believe they call them and that is the junkyard dog and now another figure for my golden era line of figures and here we have Greg the Hammer Valentine and this is not a figure that came out recently I had to find this one on eBay and as you can see got that nice jacket there this will be coming out of the box and obviously going on the little shrine for the golden era over there which I when I filled it up I will be doing another video of I've got a few videos planned believe it or not things will be going back to normal soon I haven't spoke about any of the uh <laughs> live drama going on at the moment but anyway here's Greg, Greg the Hammer Valentine and now a figure in the greatest hits line I think this was one was in demand to bring it back so many people were after it that didn't get it back in the day and this would obviously be the occasion Wrestlemania 14 when Shawn Michaels would drop the title and begin the Stone Cold era so as I said before seems to be accumulating quite a few of these Shawn Michaels figures and this will probably be my main Attitude Era Shawn Michaels so that's Shawn Michaels Wrestlemania 14 and a figure here from the now infamous 1998 King of the Ring Hell in a Cell match between Mick Foley Mankind on this occasion against The Undertaker if any of you haven't seen this the Hell in a Cell fall which I'm sure anyone watching this that's a wrestling fan has definitely seen it by now trust me they show it enough but anyway I'm not sure what this if this will came my main Mankind figure because I do believe there is an ultimate edition coming out which I believe will probably be my main edition and there is the three faces of Foley figures also coming out including his Cactus Jack WCW was it 1993 persona I believe that's the one that they've got and obviously the first introduction of Mankind in the WWF in 1996 or was it something like that and um, obviously dude love who we introduced in the WWF I believe I might be wrong for that but anyway part of the defining moments line Mankind Mick Foley the last figure in this line was Cody Rhodes but as you know I do not buy modern day wrestling figures so that's Mick Foley Mankind and we actually have another figure here in the defining moments line and here we have Shawn Michaels from Royal Rumble 1997 and I'm sure Michaels has been one of them figures I seem to be accumulating quite a lot of. I wasn't his biggest fan as uh, I thought he was a great performer, but not a big fan of the character. Sorry to Shawn Michaels fans out there, but no, not a big fan of the character. I wasn't a big fan of his promos either. But this, the defining moment, Royal Rumble 1997, Shawn Michaels. 
And now another series released recently. We've gone back to the defining moments figures. And this figure from the legendary match of WrestleMania 8, 1992 in the He Who's Your Dome, I believe that was its name, at WrestleMania 8 against Rowdy Roddy Piper for the Intercontinental title. And we have Brett the Hitman Hart here in his leather jacket. This will be coming out of the box, this one, and going as my main Brett Hitman Hart of the Golden Generation. And as I've got another two, or is it, no, yes, another two from this line of Defining Moments figures, which you'll see next. Brett the Hitman Hart. And now on to the figures and a recent release and we've been waiting for another figure in this line of figures. I think the last one was probably the uh, sort of retro arcade version they did of Mr. Perfect, which I do own. And a long time coming in the yellow, Mr. Perfect with his Intercontinental title, part of the Legend series released recently. Get yours now. And another giant of the golden era and this time we have Big John Studd. Comes with his rope there and all. I remember him and Andre the Giant obviously didn't get on too funny. Bit of uh, who's trying to be the bigger giant, but no giant will ever be better than Andre the Giant. We all know that, don't we? He was the real giant. But Big John Studd, I'm not sure what happened to Big John Studd. I'm not really looked at what happened to him after he left the WWF. Maybe someone can inform me in the comments. I'm sure I've heard it somewhere in the past and missed it before. But anyway. I do believe that's it, me shipmates. That is all the pickups shown. I hope to not leave it as long next time in between pickup videos. I should, I've just given you two in quick time here, part 14 and 15. And the net, I have got a PlayStation collection video to do where I've actually hit 100 games now. And so that's to come. And a few more things I'm thinking of. Now, when the person that's editing for me becomes more available or when I've settled, when I've got someone that can help me with that. But anyway, until next time, my shipmates, goodbye.